what I will do today, I will talk about two topics, the real-time simulation and the generative design. Those are the two new capabilities introduced by PTC, and they're very exciting for us users. First, a little bit about real-time simulation. It's almost real-time, it's near real-time, but it's amazing performance compared to what we have before. These tools provide instantaneous 3D simulation and is tightly coupled with the CAD or the flexible modeling capabilities, and they enable interactive design exploration and rapid product innovation. Why? Because it acts as a spell checker. As soon as we make a design modification in Creo, like we add a new feature, a new hole, a new rib, we find immediately the impact of that design change. Um, that's, that's enormous, that improves our productivity a lot because we can immediately change our minds or evaluate the decision. The nice thing, it's interactive. So while we can change material, for example, or we can change the geometry, we can instantaneously see the results and Kayla will show you a demo later on. Um, so in the past, if you can remember in the past, I don't know, it depends on your age, we used to have CAD tools and we export something called IGES files. Later on, they were STEP files and we import them in the CAD system, in the CAE system, and we did cleanup, and we need to select meshing controls, and then we tried to mess it, and if it didn't mess, we have to manipulate the geometry or change mesh controls or go to TETs or to bricks or whatever. Then we had to put boundary conditions, we had to put loads, we have to solve it, and finally, we go to post-processing. Now, these terms, pre and post, the solution time, are not valid anymore. There is no post-processing phase anymore because you're always in post-processing phase anyway. It's real-time post-processing. So we did the post-processing, and it was really exciting. We find out how the part behaves. And then we go back to the designer and say, mm, can you please change that fillet radius or that whole diameter? And the big problem there was the simulation was taking so long, the setup and the solution, the design evolved during that time. So the poor designer says, oh my God, this analyst doesn't know that we already changed the number of holes or we put these two ribs and etc." And it was really a big problem to have bidirectional collaboration between the designer and an analyst. Then it was a big effort from the software vendors to democratize simulation. So we had better interfaces, like in Creo Simulate, you can update the geometry automatically. In ANSYS Workbench, you can update, refresh the geometry if the geometry changes. So it was a really one way uh, transition from CAD to CAE, and we were able to do a little bit faster the simulation turnaround. Now, there is no need for that looping because we get immediately the impact of design decisions. Um, and we can have additional physics, and these capabilities exist in two products, to my knowledge right now, ANSYS Discovery Live and PTC Creo Simulation Live. Uh, to give you a quick example of the speed of these things, is this is a large thermal simulation, 1,300 parts, you know, 30,000 surfaces, about four and a half million um, mass, and it solves in 10 seconds. In 10 seconds. This was unbelievable, you know, like three years ago. What makes that um, that capability uh, reality is two things: in new solvers and the use of GPUs. So it doesn't even use the CPU of the computer; it goes straight to the graphics card and do that. Kayla will show you 
a demonstration shortly on that. Now, the other topic I want to address is generative design. This is a buzzword, it comes around a lot recently, the last couple of years, but let me give you a simple definition. It's an automatic process to generate optimum feasible designs from a set of performance requirements and design rules. And this is really disruptive, it's paradigm shift. Um, the last 3,000 years, uh, humans conceive a design, then they try it, and we try it either physically or virtually in the computer, and then if it fails, we make it thicker, stronger, taller, we change the material, and etc. If it, it passes the first time, we reduce the weight to minimize the weight. The paradigm shift here is we don't provide the design to the simulation system and try to evaluate it, but we, we provide the requirements and the space and the generative design tools spawn the designs. Very difficult paradigm shift. On the right hand side, you can see two pictures from uh, how the designs look like from PTCs uh, generate. Uh, one is a knuckle and the other is a bell crank, but you can see how different the designs is. The human mind is hard to conceive. It's very hard to conceive this type of designs. So amazing design capabilities, very exciting times for, for us. Um, how do we achieve that? How do we achieve these things today? Well, there are two basic enablers to achieve generative designs today and they're both available actually within the CRIO environment, is the topology optimization, and there are two tools there for CRIO. It's the CRIO topology optimization and the generate, which is a recent acquisition of PTC from the Frostroom people, and the capability to generate lattice structures. Nature is a very good designer. Of course, he has a lot of experience, but he uses lattice structures like beam lattice structures, uh, like the corals, he use two and a half D lattice structures, like you know the hexagons, and uses like on the bottom right some very complex, geometrically complex, but very strong structures called gyroids or surface lattice structures. In butterflies, for example which they require to fly and they need to be lightweight and very strong in long spans, they use gyroid structure on the bottom of their wings. Um, so now these capabilities with the additive manufacturing module in CRIO, they exist. We can do, and this is part of the course outline we offer. So if you want to learn about this stuff, uh, there will be some conduct information at the end of the seminar. So you can contact there and sign up for the course. So in CRIO, you can generate two and a half D lattice structures, and I'll show you examples. 3D lattice structures that the one showing on the top left. And surface lattice structures like gyroids and diamonds, which shows on the bottom right. Um, you are able to generate these lattice structures and size them. Uh, with any value you want for the design, but also you can use behavioral modeling to optimize the lattice structure. And we have a lot of examples which you specify, I want the minimum weight, but I want to make sure my deflection is greater than four millimeters or less than four millimeters. Um, also topology optimization, which is very recent, um, addition, the last three versions of CRIO have the topology optimization. But in addition to that, in CRIO 6, we have something which is really amazing for large, dense lattice structures called homogenization. So homogenization capabilities, we take a lattice structure like the one shown on the top right, and it finds the equivalent solid structure with equivalent properties so we can utilize them for uh, topology optimization and etc. Then also another amazing capability, the topology optimization has been out 
for at least 30 years. I was one of the first users of a program called Genesis, which is now within the Creo environment uh, 30 years ago. The problem was the outcome for this topology optimization stuff was faceted tessellated geometry. And the only thing you could do is get an STL. Very difficult to go to manufacturing and say, can you please build that STL? Now, in freestyle, you can automatically get performing nerbification, make them cut geometry, make it a freestyle feature, the outcome of this topology optimization. And with that's part of the course. Also, we can we can explain how to do validation and verification steps, which are required for defense and aerospace applications. Um, the topology optimization also within Creo has the heat transfer capabilities, so we can design heat exchangers, and I'll show you an example later. And we can synthesize metamaterials, which um, are materials, we specify the material property, and we have the system tell us how, what lattice structure we'll use. Um, this is standard Creo features. So here's, for example, the interface, how to create a two and a half D structure. You can go on the top left and select two and a half D, 3D beams or surface lattices, the, the direction you want. And then you can specify, you have an option of what shape, let's say octagonal, and you can specify the dimensions. All these dimensions are traditional Creo dimensions, so they can be optimized, and it's a feature. So if you execute that, you, you will get some structure like this. This is the top and side view. And with by simply changing the option, you can make it a triangular, and you can choose you know, to have um, fillets at the end. Uh, those are isogrid structures, and because those are Pro E features, you can very easily go to do complex downstream applications like spinal bands and toroidal bands. And I'll show you an example in a minute. Here is if you want to select the hexagons, and here if you want to do octagons and etc. So it's very easy to explore very complex geometries, and then with Creo Simulation Live, you can evaluate them. So here. If I had this and I had the Creo Simulation Live active, I could explore these five designs in less than five minutes. So no, no round trips to, to the CAE people to do the preliminary design for these structures. The other beauty within the Creo environment, which is very unique, if you select, let's say, a 2.5D lattice structure, you can automatically mid-plane it because the Creo generated, it knows where the mid planes are. And for you guys, your Creo simulate guys, you understand what I'm talking about. This is supposed to be cell structure. And then you generate cell structures and solid structures and you find the appropriate intersections and you're able to analyze that. Similarly, for 3D beam lattice structures, you can generate the geometry and it will be cut geometry, so you can go and add the fillet there if you want, or you can add the hole or a cut or whatever. And then because Creo generated that it knows their datum curves connecting joints, it can very easily convert it for simulation purposes to beam elements. So now you have a bunch of beam elements in two plate solid elements. So it's feasible to analyze it in a very short period of time and you can see the intersection between the solids and the beams, and you can solve and find, for example, the displacement distribution. Um, another third example is uh, to see a heat exchanger. You have a heat exchanger. This was an avionics heat exchanger. We want to reduce weight. You can you have some heat loads in the back. Uh, you can uh, analyze it in uh, the simulation live or Creo simulate, find the temperatures. They meet the requirement, but it's too heavy. You go around the topology optimization and you can see that three type structure which flows the, the heat out quickly and then cools it off. So you don't need the whole structure and you can generate the a heat exchanger who looks like that. And this is sort of 
the design space and the one remains there. Really cool stuff. I mean, uh, you, it's hard for the human to imagine this thing. So it's really amazing to see capabilities of the software to enable, to enable and accelerate innovation. Really cool stuff. Uh, here is, for example, uh, this starts from one uh, flat plate. You can fill it up with um, the hexagon uh, two and a half D lattice structure and use a toroidal band, and you can generate this complex geometry, which will be very, very difficult to generate with any CAD system today. Uh, typically, now we have 3D lattice fields. They, they're these very complex lattice structures they call them gyroids and you can infill this was part of the guided projectile which you put motors and batteries but all of this was chunk of metal which you machine and machine and machine and if something goes wrong you throw it away and start over again now with 3d printing and surface lattice structures we can build these things very fast and we have very elegant lightweight designs um, a fifth example will be to, to use the gyroids uh, on heat exchanger. You can have a, a airflow here, the warm and the cold, and the gyroids separate the space into totally different um, uh, volume regions. And you can see the airflow goes like this, and the other one goes right under it, and they are very intermingled very well. And here is the typical gyroid. This is just a feature in ProE. Uh, it's like the cell feature. Instead of filling out the part with blank air, we can fill it up with a gyroid structure. And this will be the blocking buffer to exchange that. Uh, similarly, the other nice thing, especially in Creo 6, is the representation of lattice structures as solids, which is the B rep type geometry or simplified geometry, as I showed you earlier, beams and cells, or homogenized geometry, which is a full uh, solid, but it has the material properties, density, modules of elasticity, Poisson ratio, and shear modules of the equivalent lattice structure. And the other nice thing is that in Creo today, you, can, you have what we call density, so you can transition from solid to the lattice structure with a variable thickness, which is very complex geometry. Uh, and it looks like that if you look at it in close view to do that. In summary, leverage the following additive manufacturing advantages. The tools finally are there. You can integrate your fixturing in your 3D printed part, um, and then you can cut them off. You have enormous design freedom to do the, for example, on the right is a, um, what we call conformal cooling with cavities at the, at the uh, cooling volumes. Uh, and the cavities are filled with lattices. Um, it gives two axes, you know, you can remove the mold, freeform surfaces, and then lower part count, part consolidation is an amazing capability of 3D printing because we can combine elbows and, you know, 45s and pipes and et cetera, and we can make a simple one part because before we couldn't do it because we couldn't manufacture it. Uh, for conformal cooling, like on the bottom right, you can design your flow paths around the, the mold, around the part, so you can cool the part, the mold faster, so you can improve the productivity of the manufacturing. No drill and plug for you guys, mold guys, you know what the term is. Of course, enormous lightweighting capabilities uh, by using lattice structures, topology optimization, and generative design. Um, so use simulation to drive the design, the, 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 thicknesses and ready eyes of the lattices are driven by the topology optimization so you can do super efficient designs. Okay, so that was a quick overview for that. And now Kayla will show you a demonstration of Creo Simulation Live. Thank you. So thank you, Andreas. And uh, while Kayla is switching over for the controls, uh, we do have 
Uh, Andreas finished a couple of minutes early, so we do have uh, time for a couple of questions on this before we get into the actual demonstration. If you have a question, please hit the button, raise your hand, and then I can control for uh, allowing the question, or you can go through the chat and ask the question that way. Okay. And Andreas, one more question as you're looking at this. We have people here that represent a variety of different companies that are on the phone, people who make heavy industry equipment, uh, missile and space systems, uh, several different industrial companies that I'm looking at, uh, large turbo machinery. When you're thinking about the uh, additive manufacturer, what are some of the applications that you're seeing used in industry today as it's moved beyond just a uh, uh, original idea from a few years ago into actually being put into production facilities? Yes, there are, there are a couple of general applications. Um, as I show you, lattice structures, for example, like the gyroid I saw earlier, uh, we couldn't conceive that. It was discovered in the 70s by mathematicians, but the cut tools could not make these lattice structures. In uh, CNC machines couldn't manufacture them. So the big breakthrough came with additive manufacturing. Now we can print these things. And after Creo 6, we can build them in CAD. And with Generate, we can optimize them. So we can have the first super application is very lightweight structures. Uh, examples, let's say uh, SpaceX, you can see uh, rocket engines and um, crew capsule engines, which they have been designed for 3D printing, they have combined a bunch of parts together and they have the ability to vibrate less, weight less, and be stronger. So the first major application is generate lightweight, strong structures, uh, relatively fast with complex geometries. Uh, a second big application is these lattice structures has amazing capabilities of intermingle uh, fluid volumes, let's say of cold and hot. So a, a lot of applications, we have worked in it like oil coolers for helicopters and airplanes uh, because the heat exchangers are much more efficient and the, we couldn't even dream about these things. That's where innovation comes. It helps you to accelerate innovation by seeing these cool shapes, you know, generated and 3D print them. So uh, first lightweight application, then uh, you can see applications of um, uh, heat exchangers. Um, there, there is no industry wouldn't be impacted by that, you know. So. I, I would be glad to entertain questions. We're fighting these issues for the last, let's say, five years before these capabilities were within the CRIO environment. Now, my life is much easier because we can generate these things. And with CRIO Simulation Live, we can evaluate them very quickly. So this is, this is not just an incremental uh, design improvement, you know. It's uh, a big breakthrough. It's, you know. Uh, it's a game changer technology for designers. So whoever is able to adapt these technologies quickly, it will clean up their competition. Excellent, thanks Andreas. And for those that don't know, Andreas uh, used to make a comment when he gave a presentation, this is several years ago at NAFOMS. He says, one of the problems today is that we cannot, uh, that we can actually make things that we cannot design. And then last, year when he was talking about with the with the new versions for Creo, he said we can finally start designing the things that with 3D printing we've been able to make. And follow up to the presentation, um, I'm going to share uh, one item quickly. Uh, and if you're able to see my screen now, Andreas talked about the uh, additive manufacturing uh, design optimization on our website here is the web page talking about that particular class that Andreas was referencing and you'll get a link to the uh, to this web page and follow up to the class. Okay. Kayla would you take control now and start going through CSL? 
I'm sorry, I use the abbreviation that we use in, in the, the CREO land. CREO Simulation Live. Yes, thank you, Dr. Andreas, for your presentation. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining me today. Uh, my name is Kayla Myers. I am the sales engineer for EngineSoft. And today we are going to go over CREO Simulation Live and CREO Simulate. Um, EngineSoft has partnered with PTC to promote and sell these two software products as of March 19th of this year. CREO Simulate is a computer-aided engineering software. Um, it is a finite advanced tool equipped with enhanced design capabilities. And today we are going to go over the details, benefits, and values of these programs. Uh, before beginning though, real quick, I would like to mention that we will be answering all questions at the end of the webinar today. So please feel free to use the Q&A feature at the, at the bottom of your screen to send a question or hold them to the very end. So first, I'd like to go over a quick overview of what we're gonna be covering. First, we'll discuss CREO Simulation Live and present a demonstration over it. Then we will discuss CREO Simulate, excuse me, and use it to validate our CSL answers. And then finally, at the very end, we will take all your questions. So CREO Simulation Live or CSL has some very, uh, you know, benefits to designers. Uh, the first one is that it's fast. The average time to run a, a live simulation is under a minute. And actually, um, it can be faster than that, seconds. Uh, it is interactive. Results are updated dyna dynamically as those modifications are made. The user has complete control over what they are analyzing. And speed and interaction work hand in hand with Creo Simulation Live. So every change you make, um, it, it simulates for you. So there's no tweak and wait cycles. Creo Simulation Live um, updates automatically. It is easy to use. Creo Simulation Live is integrated completely into Creo Parametric, which is the 3D CAD software system. And it's easy enough that you, know, you don't need a degree in FEA to understand it. Um, it does use optimization. So the user is able to edit their model and product with no effect to the simulation software. Um, it reduces iteration time and allows you as the designer or the analyst to invest more time in your product value. It also is directive, so you can find the root causes of the failure and see minor mistakes a whole lot faster than you would if you used a normal FBA analysis tool. Um, you can see maximum and minimum, minimum excuse me, result values and make the changes as needed. Um, here is a list of our capabilities and functions within CSL. Um, it elevates it above, that elevates it above the standard FEA analysis. So first, you're able to change actually your accuracy and speed changes. Um, there's a little bar, and I'll show you when we go through the demonstration, that allows you to uh, increase your accuracy or increase your speed accordingly. Um, it does use or it does involve structural, modal, and thermal simulations. So you have stress, deformations, fatigue, uh, natural frequency, um, thermal simulations like steady state, et cetera. Um, you do have multiple result types that you can view, such as uh, von Mises stress, max principal stress, reaction forces, normal and shear stresses, and deformations. Um, you have the ability to maintain your loads and constraints after um, updating them, Oops, sorry, hit the wrong button. Um, so even once you add a load or constraint, you you know they're there. They're not going to change. Um, you also have the ability to control your simulation, so you can start and stop it at any point. Uh, it is a powerful linear sol linear solver, and the meshing occurs during simulation, so you don't actually need to define it at any point during the uh, analysis. So here is our Creo Simulive demonstration point. Um, I will take some time to walk through it. Um, if you have any questions, please again, feel free to use the Q&A um, at the bottom of your screen. And then bear with me one second. I'll bring up our optimized design here. So we are gonna go through two demonstrations today. Um, they will be focusing on optimizing an original design. So this original design um, is apart from a snowmobile, we're going to redesign it in order to produce a part that has its weight reduced while maintaining the integrity of the, the model itself. So this one um, is the optimized version. And uh, I'll show you after we're done what the original looks like. 
So on here, we are going to add uh, our forces. Now these are just example forces, nothing is exact per se. So you know you can change any of these forces and constraints that you want, but for this one, we're going to go to Live Simulation tab. It takes kind of just a second. All right, under here, under demo, you're going to see your constraints and your loads. So on the load, loads, I already have them applied. You can edit them or view them by clicking this button right here. So as you can tell, I have a 1,000 Newton load on the back bar. On the middle bar, or force two, I have a 200 um, load, 200 Newton load. And on the front, we have a 400 Newton load. So those are the loads that I have decided to place on this model. For the constraints, um, there are none. As you can see, if I click this, nothing happens. I am going to rotate this just a little bit, and we are going to add a fixed constraint to this hole, this hole, and this hole down here at the bottom. You can see right there, it tells me that it's fixed and that it's ready to go. Rotate it so you can see both sides. And then, as as easy as Creo Simulation Live is, this is how this is how you do it. You just hit the Simulate button. Once you have your constraints and your loads, it automatically updates. So here, um, the default is von Mises stress in mag megapascals. Excuse me. And earlier, I was talking about that performance on speed and accuracy. This is your simulation quality here with your speed on one side and your accuracy on the other. The default is 30% accurate. So, you, so I personally like to increase the accuracy all the way up at the top. Um, it does take just a little bit longer to kind of calibrate back out to equilibrium, but the results are a little bit more accurate. Um, so it, it's kind of time versus accuracy, whichever you prefer. Uh, so again, that default is von Mises stress, but you can come back up here to result options. And there's a list here of all the different result types that you can pick. So say you want to look at def deformation, um, you can take a look at it like that. And then you have different rendering methods. Um, so like composite would show like a see-through method, um, your max value. Uh, surface is pretty common though. Um, your result components, and then even your units. So you can see it in centimeters, and it updates here, um, inches, and again, your values change. We'll go back to millimeters. The cool thing with deformation is you can actually play its um, uh, deformation movement. So, you know, you can hit play, you can increase the speed, you can decrease the speed, all personal preference. So again, it gives you that control of whatever you want to do. This this is going to allow you to do it. And so you can stop it, and it goes back to normal. So as you can see through this, um, I mean, it, it takes seconds to, to update this. Um, say I wanted to change the force. Let's see. Let's make this one like 2,000. And we can make the front one. Fifty. You can see your deformation changes instantly. Your gradients change instantly. So I think um, Creative Simulation Live is a pretty cool tool to to not have to wait those long hours spending doing an FEA analysis. So let me go back to our slide. And so I apologize. This is what our original model looked, and this is what our optimized model looked using um, generative design. So Creo is an FEA tool. So yes, Creo has the CSL version, which is the real time, but it also has a normal FEA tool as well. It does come as an extension to the main Creo software package. Um, or it does come as its own app. Um, the extension, though, is you know what really makes that really helpful. Um, it works within the Creo Parametric app, which was the app that I was just in, 
and it allows the user to move back and forth between your editing and your analysis a whole lot easier. Since it is integrated within the Parametric app, the designer is able to compare quick live analysis results with finalized validated um, answers with ease. Uh, the Creo Simulation Live, or sorry, the Creo Simulation extension has an elevated precision without the need to pay substantial costs up front. So again, it's it's its own. Um, you can get it in its own form, or you can get it integrated. It being integrated, it's ease and money or uh, low cost at the same time. Saves you money. Uh, Creo Simulate is a great use for anyone, um, all the way from a company who just has one person doing all the designing and analysis, but it can be perfect for just an ana uh, analyst who wants to make a quick change if need be. So let me show you the Creo Simulate. Now again, I have the Creo Simulate um, extension, so it is integrated into my Creo Parametric. So again, here's our optimized design. Um, to go to Creo Simulate, we're gonna go, we're gonna go right up here to Applications, and Simulate will pop up right here. If you do have the standalone app, this little try, try box picture will be your um, little app picture as well. All right. So once you do that, um, you'll want to make sure you'll go to model setup, make sure your FEM is unchecked. Um, we're not doing just a mesh, we're going to actually analyze it as well. So you'll make sure that that's unchecked. You'll wanna create some measures. So say you wanna look at stress, let's do max principle this time. You'll hit okay. Say you wanna look at deformation or displacement. Um, defaults to millimeters, you'll hit OK. You'll close that. Now, as you can see, we do have our fixed points here and here, but we don't have our loads. So simple, you just come back up here to force. You'll select your, your surfaces. You'll apply your loads. So let's apply 1,000 newtons to that one. We had 200 here in the, in the middle bars. We have 400 in the front. Keep all the, all the loads consistent throughout here. So you can go down here, you can check. Um, purposely added this one here, so these were ones that were canceled. So anything that has a drop down menu, um, that's what you wanna look at. And then actually, I think we're gonna change these. Yeah, so we have them. Um, we need to fix both of them. Always good to double check. Always good to double check. All right, so you have your loads here and you have your constraints. That means you're able to run the analysis. Now, as we all know, instead of waiting for the FEA to, com to complete, uh, I have saved some time and already run the analysis on, these, on this model. Um, I will let you know that it did take over an hour to analyze. So um, after that, you would just go here to analysis and studies. Um, I have it set up here. You would just do a new static model, and then you would run the analysis. And you can see your, your study status here, um, and it would run through your total uh, analysis. So we'll go ahead and close that. Go back to our PowerPoint here. So here are the results using Creo Simulate. So it was that same optimized part. Um, here on the left, you'll see that I did stress of max principle in megapascals, and it's ranged from low to high. And then on this side, I used displacement in millimeters, and it's ranged from low to high. So you take, uh, it's, here's its total mass, and here's its total deformation, and its total max principle stress. Here's Creo Simulation Life. Now take note, here's its mass again, its deformation, and its max principle, stress. And if you look at the two, and I can kind of toggle back and forth here in just a second, um, you know, our goal again was to reduce the weight and maintain integrity. Now if you go back to that original model, the optimized model was 
actually reduced by 70%. So its weight decreased quite, quite substantially. Um, the stress um, for the optimized model, while it still looks high, um, the model used low carbon steel. So it is well below its yield stress of 490. So the integrity is still there. It's not going to fail anytime soon. And um, we reduced its mass. So we achieved both of our, our goals with that. So um, with these results, you can see, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll click back here, um, the stress and deformation points are in the same locations um, between Creo Simulation Live and Creo Simulate. Um, the mass reduction obviously is, this, is the same. The design didn't change. The deformation um, has a 95% accuracy, and the max principal stress was also 90% accurate. Uh, again, the stress stayed below the material yield. And let me let me go back and forth so you can see that real quick. If it'll let me. There you go. So um, again, mass didn't change. Our design didn't change. We're using the same model. The deformation went from um, 0.438 in simulate, which is you know that finite anal element analysis, and then our real time was only 0.417. And then um, again, the real time, it was 160.158 for its max principal stress. And if you go back to the max principal stress of using the finite element analysis tool, it's only 176.59. So we have that 93% um, accuracy average, which I mean, it's awesome. So um, in conclusion, using those two, um, uh, result Creo Simulation Live is a great tool for all for any and all designers to have. I mean, you, like I said, you know, with the Creo Simulate, it took over an hour, so you can reduce the time by almost 200%, and your solutions are within 10% of what you would consider, I guess, the controlled analysis. So it is a pretty awesome tool um, to, to utilize to to save time to you know, get more creative with your with your models and your parts. So that leaves us with this, you know, what can Creo do for you? You know, we understand that your employees are your most important assets and resource. They're gonna spend the most time creating product optimization and unique product features. So instead of doing all those analysis over and over and over again, why not have them focus on, on something else? you know, create new products faster and more accurately, less iterations waiting for those in-between analysis cycles again. And, you know, 56% of customers say they need to launch a product quicker. So with Creo, um, specifically Creo Simulation Live, your product development is streamlined, your time to market is improved, um, you know, it, it's all faster. And I, I think everyone can agree that faster is, you know, is pretty good. Uh, Creo Simulation Live increases quality. Um, it gives you that competitive differentiation. It's a characteristic that has the most impact on product competition. This ultimately leads to an increase in market share, uh, brand loyalty. You know, more of your customers are going to come back to you and gaining new customers, which again will increase your revenue, make you more money. Um, and then obviously you can reduce aftermarket services, so less repair costs, warranty replacements, things like that. I do want to thank you all for participating. So at this point, um, we'll take any questions you might have over either of those um, products. Okay. Thank you, Kayla. And Kayla, uh, I want to point out a couple of things. Can you call up on your screen also just the visual of the lattice structure solution that was the one of the options available as well? While she's doing yes, give that, me one second. <laughs> yeah, while she's doing that, the uh, idea for Creo Simulation Live is that you can rapidly narrow the design space. So you can come up with a lot of different ideas, make some movements in there, and you're getting fast results. Ultimately, would you still do a full analysis once you have it using Creo Simulator FEA? Then absolutely, and that's what she's showing here. But at a 90 plus percent accuracy, in this case, 95% on one of them, 91% on another, as a designer, you are able to get a much faster uh, answer 
for the problem and then go into and look at specifics. Now we did this using uh, optimization of a part with Creo Simulation Live uh, and did do a optimized part that you saw as well as the lattice structure, uh, which we'll show in just a minute. With that, uh, I will open it up for questions. If people want to raise a hand, please do so. Uh, and Andreas, did you have anything that you wanted to add? Uh, not, not at this time. I'll be glad to entertain any questions. Okay, so there's the lattice structure there. Yes, so this is the lattice structure in its deformation stage, and then right behind it, sorry about the double picture, um, that is the lattice structure under its maximum principal stress. So again, you know, it has that deformation again in the, in the front, and its stress points are, you know, almost in the exact same places as the optimized design. And so, you know, it, it's not limiting you to using only the optimized design you know if you look back at the optimized design and let me see if i can go back just real quick and show you um you know you can see where there's a better picture where those parts are where you can take out material so say you don't need to reduce the mass that much you know by 70 percent you, you can reduce it just a little bit or if you want it to be a little bit more rigid, um, you know, again, you, you, you can do that. Um, so uh, let's see, there you can kind of see the, where the hole is there and the hole is there, you know, I've, I've just created a lattice structure. Um, and I mean, it, it's a great representation tool to, to just kind of be able to play with it. And, the, and that's what's cool about Creo Simulation Live is that it gives you that freedom to play with it, you know, and, and, and do different things with your design. So, and even if you look here, you know, on this deformation, you know, that, I mean, 0 0.05 to the 0 0.04, I mean, it's, um, you know, it's, it's pretty awesome, you know, less deformation. So it's great. I have received a question online regarding the pricing for Creo Simulation Live. Creo Simulation Live uh, has a price structure similar to the subscription models for other applications. Um, it is a little bit dependent on whether or not you want a, a localized license or a floating license, but uh, if you want to email me offline, we will get the specifics for you on that. Okay. And without putting them on the spot too much, I know that we have a couple of people on the phone as well that have joined from PTC. Uh, would either of you want to speak, uh, and I can unmute your microphone if you wanted to speak about some of the applications for Creo Simulation Live that you were seeing. And Gavin, I was thinking about you in particular, which you, uh oh, shoot. should now be allowed, able to talk. Chris, can you hear me? I can now. Hey, how you doing? Good afternoon, everybody. Yeah, so look, I think um, like nice demonstration today, I think, you know, clearly shows <clears throat> what Career Simulation Live can do um, in comparison to, you know, let's say, call it a more traditional tool. And thanks, Andreas, for showing us some pretty amazing images about what's possible with some of the lattice designs. Um, I, I think the big message I'd like customers and people on the phone to take away is that we're, we're not seeing Creo Simulation Live as a replacement tool to the comment that you made uh, on a versus a traditional analysis piece of software. It's really intended, like I said, to help every Creo designer make better choices as they're making their design. Typically today, I think people feel perhaps a little bit wary of trying to do some simulation because they're not an expert or the extra time it takes to prep it as, as Kayla capably showed earlier on. So again, if you can have a tool that can help you know that you're making a good or bad choice with your design each time without any sort of load on your process, I think for me, that's the, the distinct value that uh, a Creo Simulation Live should be able to bring for any of your uh, attendees on the call today. Um, in terms of industry so far, we've seen 
you know, a pretty wide range of people who've taken it up. I don't think there's any one particular use case that's winning. But uh, for most of our customers, like a structure and analysis is typically their number one requirement. So that's really what they're, what's, it's been used for, uh, for most of today. Excellent, thank you, Gavin. We did have another question come in, uh, and this Andreas, speaking about lattice structures and the in heavy industry where you're dealing with some rather substantial forces, uh, have you seen any specific examples of lattice structures in uh, in heavy industry? I, uh, the answer is not in large components because the current limitation in additive manufacturing is the built envelope of the printers. You know, let's say the most of the metal printers can go like uh, 12 by 12 by 12 or something like that. So due to the size limitation, we see the applications in smaller components. Like uh, in, I'll tell you in, uh, airplanes and helicopters, we have projects with the US Army Aviation and Missile Command. We use them for, for example, oil coolers, enormous performance uh, of the heat exchanger and much lighter weight. We see them in bell cranks when there is controls, uh, you try to move something in from the stick, uh, there's a bunch of bell cranks to transfer the motion down. So we see them in bell cranks. And then we see them in covers of um, uh, gearboxes. So, but I, we don't see them. There, there are some um, vendors they can print very big um, parts, but I don't know if they're competitive at this time for, let's say, a tractor trailer arm. But all the small components within, and also if you have a good database of these things and your customer, let's say, is in the Middle East and it's missing a component, you can send the file and you print it locally. And if you can do the post process locally, like say a gear, a special gear or a knob or stuff like that. Okay, thank you, Andreas. And I did get another question regarding the class. So I put that on screen here. Uh, and that is the question was, Andreas, is that something that can be taught? Because this one mentions okay. Dallas. Is that something that we can taught in uh, other uh, location to particular okay. at a customer site? Yeah. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, we have done this class uh, all over in Europe, like Sweden and Denmark and Italy and Germany and Greece uh, at the customer sites and we tailor it to their needs. So um, you learn basically how to design for additive manufacturing. It's not just the clicks of how to generate lattice structures, which, you know, they're, they're intricate because lattice structures are very complex geometries, you know, so you need to specify a lot of little things like their size, the transitions, their, uh, uh, what type, 2.5D, 3D beam, 3D surface, uh, how to control the thicknesses in gyroids and etc. cetera, um, how to do um, uh, molds which they're conformally cooled, um, how to do heat exchangers. So yes, it's hands-on. Uh, uh, it's just traditional Creo features, so it's no, if you're familiar with Creo, you will be able to complete all the, the assignments uh, on the spot. And uh, we try to limit it to class less than 12 people, you know, but we can offer okay. it at the company side. Okay, and I'm sorry, uh, the one more just came in. Uh, Scott Miller was asking... Uh, if we wanted to integrate IoT sensors into our design and then verify the actual load versus the simulated load, what would be the best simulation tool, live or simulate to uh, live or simulate to use? Kayla, do you have an uh, answer, or Andreas, if you either of you have a yeah, I can I can answer that. Um, if you do real time digital twin. That's where Creo Simulation Live signs because it's real time. 
in Creo, there is a new concept over the last two, three releases of a sensor. So you can embed the sensor somewhere on the model and you can say that sensor will get the live stream data from let's say a machine tool uh, running. And then you can see real time simulation. So that's sort of the first implementation of a digital twin with simulation in it. So that's pretty exciting. Now, if the data are not need to be real time, so you don't have, you have a digital twin, but there is no requirement to do it real time to make a decision. You know, let's say if you want just to investigate a potential load path or a load profile, you can do it in Creo Simulate, uh, Creo Simulate uh, regular, traditional. Um, but let's say if you monitor a machine, which uh, machine something, and you have a sensor in the tool, and you want to find the fatigue live, um, you need to do it real time. And then you can prevent the fatigue failure by saying, uh oh, we reached the number of uh, cycles or stress level exceeds that uh, allowable. So let's stop the machine so we can change the tool. I don't know if that answers the question. Kayla, do you want to add something on that? Please feel free. I mean, I was going to kind of say the same thing. You, you are able to add a sensor in, so you should be able to verify those loads. Okay. At this point, we have uh, hit exactly at the one hour mark that we uh, scheduled the time for. Everybody will be getting a follow up email with links for additional information uh, on both the additive manufacturing as well as Creo Simulation Live and Creo. Uh, we certainly thank you for your time today, and if we can be of further assistance, please let us know. Look forward to working with you and hopefully seeing everybody at simulation at uh, uh, Creo Live in Boston in uh, two weeks. Gavin, two weeks? Yep, yes. two, two weeks. We'll see you there. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.